So now that you know about what the various accounts are and how to increase and decrease these accounts, um, we're now going to get started on actually building a continuous accounting process. So um, now that you've set up even your chart of accounts within your accounting system, whether that's a manual one on the spreadsheets or uh, through your accounting package, um, you now need to build something that's going to capture the various transactions on a monthly basis and turn them into financial statements. So just in terms of giving you a quick overview of what this continuous accounting process would look like, uh, we would start with capturing and analyzing all the various transactions. And so we do that in, by recording them in what's called journal entries, um, JE for short. Um, once we do that, we then post these into the various buckets that we've created for each of these accounts. So we will post these various journal entries into these buckets. And once we do that, we then need to uh, create some other adjusting entries that are not part of these regular transactions, but need to be in entered into the system every, every period, whether it's monthly or annually or quarterly, depending on how frequently you do this. Uh, so we would add more adjusting entries uh, and these would be both journal journal entries as well as then posting them into the buckets again so that we have a final amount that is in each of the buckets. And then from there, we will basically produce a list of all of the, uh, the buckets and what the amounts are in each of the buckets. So uh, we'll have a list with amounts, both debits as well as credits. And if everything works out correctly, the bottom number uh, in this list will balance so that we know at the end of the day this equation all makes sense. This list is known as a trial balance. So here we go and once we've done this we can easily create the various financial statements whether it's the balance sheet, the income statement, um, or even the cash flow statement. We haven't talked much about the cash flow statement uh, since our first session but the cash flow statement basically is made up of the same accounts that impact the balance sheet as well as the income statement and they also appear in the cash flow statement. It doesn't require any additional accounts for them. Um, and then once we do that, we finally close out the books. Uh, we enter some closing entries um, and then that's it. And that's the end of the cycle. Um, and then the next period, it starts all over again. Uh, so that's basically the process we're going to follow. In this session, I'm going to quickly cover how to capture and analyze these transactions in these initial journal entries and then we'll next talk about posting them uh, into the various buckets. Okay, so we're going to get started with capturing and analyzing transactions. Every month or every period, uh, there are going to be various transactions in your business and those transactions would impact uh, each one of these items in here. I would uh, suspect that the bulk of the transactions would be either revenue related, uh, so it will be related to sales, um, or there would be expenses. So for example, if you, you paid for your rent or if you paid for your phone bill, etc. So the bulk of the transactions are probably income statement related, and depending on how you paid them, uh, it would either impact cash or uh, some sort of, uh, if it was an expense, it would be uh, an account payable because you still owed it. Uh, or if it was sales related, it would again impact either cash or if you sold on credit, it would impact again an asset account, the accounts receivable. So that would take care of the bulk of the transactions. Some other types of transactions during the month would, would have a direct impact on assets and liabilities. For example, if during the month you actually received an amount from a client for a previous uh, sale, uh, that would impact both the, uh, actually the assets, both the accounts receivable and the cash. Um, or if, say, during the month you pay the supplier for something you purchased in the past, that would impact the accounts payable, which is a liability account. It would reduce it, uh, but it would also reduce the, the cash that you use to pay it. Uh, so those are the various types of transactions that you would have during the month. Again, I would suspect that the bulk of your transactions would be revenue and expense related, as well as having some other transactions that would have an impact on assets and liabilities. Uh, you may also have, for example, purchased uh, a large a piece of equipment that has a future economic benefit more than just one period. So in that case, if you purchase, uh, say, a computer that's going to be with you for the next five years or three years, it's not going to necessarily be recorded directly as an expense. In those cases, we would actually record it as an asset, and that's what we call 
uh, in accounting terms, they say you capitalize it. And what that basically means is rather than recording the entire amount as an expense, you would record it as an asset, and then over time, you would expense a portion of it as it gets used up over time. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at our, our example of Ron's designs, and let's go through some examples of some transactions that Ron went through during the period. And basically what you would do is for each transaction that you get, uh, you would analyze a few things. And it's a four-step process before you can create a journal entry. Uh, step one is you would take the transaction and you would analyze it. You would take a look at uh, what's the nature of the transaction. And then you would ask yourself, what accounts does it impact? So what accounts? Uh, does it impact. You'd also then take a look at is it increasing? So is it increasing or decreasing the account? And if you look at our last session, we talked about uh, the various um, ways assets are increased or decreased, which is uh, uh, through debits and credits and liabilities, ec uh, equity, revenue, and expenses also. Uh, how they get increased or decreased, and whether it's a debit or a credit. So if you if you wish, you can review that session again. Um, and then the last step is once we understand all of this, we can then create the journal entry, and that's our way of capturing uh, the the actual transaction. So we would create the journal entry, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but that's basically the four step process that we will go through for any transaction. Um, before we can actually create the journal entry to make sure, sure that it's uh, correct. Um, and one piece of advice is always remember that for every little debit, there must be a little credit. So for every debit, there is a little credit. A little credit. And that's really important because if you don't balance the debits and credits, the journal entry is not going to balance and therefore none of this equation will balance and it will affect our final financial statements. They won't be uh, balanced properly. So always remember that for every debit there is a little credit. Let's take a look at four, four or five examples from Ron's designs. 